So I'm here today to refute my advocate's claim. Um, first, the advocate gave us a description of the bill. Next, she made the claim that the bill would cause an increase in racial profiling. She then says that it may be unconstitutional if we have this bill in Arizona. And she also said that the economic impacts will guarantee the repeal of this bill. First, I would like to give a little background information about illegal immigration so you may understand some of the points I'm going to say. Um, the first one I have is from Michael Kraft. He wrote in the Charlotte Conservative News that um, 12 Americans are murdered every day by illegal aliens. 25% of warrants for murder in Los Angeles are for illegal aliens. Next, a study done by the Humboldt State University said that in 1980, immigrants headed 7.6% of all households, paid 7.0% of all taxes, and received 9.1% of all welfare benefits. In 1990, immigrants headed 8.4% of all households, paid 8.3% of taxes, and received 13.1% of all welfare benefits. <coughs> um, first, her claim that Senate Bill 1070 will lead to racial profiling. First, I would like to say that um, one thing that she left out was that um, in this bill, there was um, a clause that stated, importantly, this training or that police officers that would implement this bill would get special training, and this training would include what does and does not constitute reasonable suspicion that a person is not legally present in the United States. Their training will help them to not profile someone that they are arresting. So it's not really right to say that it would lead to racial profiling when the police officers that will be handling this bill be taught to not racially profile. Um, the um, writer of the bill, Arizona Governor Jan Brewer, said that um, in a speech after writing the bill, today I'm issuing an executive order directing the Arizona Peace Officer Standards and Training Board to develop training to appropriately implement Senate Bill 1070. Just reiterating, reiterating the fact that special training will be given to police officers so they will not be racially profiled. Also, um, Stephen Kimroda wrote in um, the Center for Immigration Studies on the New Arizona Immigrant Law that uh, the new law is extremely popular among Arizona voters. A recent poll found that 70% of voters approve of the new bill. Only 23% disapprove of the bill. It is obvious that the people that are causing such an uproar about the bill, they're in the minority. Most of the people really do approve of this bill. Um, and then Castillo Mariano <coughs> wrote in um, CNN Justice that according to the Nonpartisan Immigration Policy Institute, proponents of the bill will up two salient points. <coughs> it's true that crime rates have already been falling in Arizona for years despite the presence of un unauthorized immigrants. And a century's worth of research has demonstrated that immigrants are less likely to commit crimes or be behind bars than many have born. However, recent studies have also shown that due to the economic recession, there has been a decrease in the flow of immigration into the United States. And um, it has slowly begun to increase once the economic economy has gotten better. So it's not really valid to say that the crime rate is really decreasing or increasing. It really depends on the flow of immigration. Next, I'd like to um, touch on a point that my opponent says that it is against the Constitution. The Constitution was written by the Founding Fathers for the citizens of the United States, so you can't really give these rights to people who aren't citizens of the United States. In fact, in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, under the powers of Congress, it says, <coughs> to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. In Article 4, Section 4, under Republican government, it says the United States shall guarantee to every state in its union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. It 
has invasion twice in the Constitution, and the American Heritage Dictionary um, defines invade as to trespass or intrude on. This is pretty much the exact definition of what illegal immigration is. So it says in the Constitution that it is the power, it is the power of Congress to stop the intrusion of immigration. Congress is supposed to do so It's not really unconstitutional to implement that bill when it's, when it's a congressional power. Next, I'd like to refute the um, <coughs> claim that its, um, that its economic impact will guarantee the repeal of the bill. First, um, a study by Humboldt State University said that in some direct expenditures results in a net loss of $16 billion and a loss of native wages at another $44 billion for total costs from immigration of $60 billion. I think that the presence of illegal immigration and the economic deficit that they cause is not is, is better than what it would take to implement this bill. And the same study said that the cost benefit analysis suggests that the cost sixty billion outweigh the benefits fifty one billion by nine billion annually. So nine billion dollars is the difference between having the bill and not having the bill. It's economically better if you do have the bill. Um, CNN I report <coughs> states that 62% of all undocumented immigrants in the U.S. are working for cash and not paying taxes. Predominantly illegal aliens <coughs> are working without a green card. I think it's fairly obvious from just these three sources that illegal immigration, that the ex economic deficit caused by illegal immigration is much worse than the cost it would take to implement this bill, so the claim that the economic impact will guarantee repeal isn't, isn't valid in this case. 